Welcome to the lion's den. Let's go. Let's go. Good everybody, what's good? Welcome to the Lions Damn Podcast. I am your host, Money Compton. I got my co-host, Mr. Mike O. What's good, bro? What's up, man? How's it going? I'm just getting over this cold, this little flu cold I had over the, the past weekend. Not corona. Sub so, so quarantine? I, I you know what? I, I think I am. Um because my, my job told me, hey, you know, uh, with all this stuff going down, we will let you work from home up to two weeks if you like. And then yeah. uh I was like, all right, I probably just need a few days. And then a day later, my manager calls me and goes, hey, they kind of changed the um, policy. Um, they want you to stay at home for the whole two weeks. So, oh, yeah. but Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess you have been self-quarantined. I am. I am. Hey, it's cool, man. I mean, it was it was a terrible weekend. I'm not going to lie. It was a ter- terrible. I felt like garbage. It was just low-grade fever. You know, the symptoms is kind of crazy when they're talking about it. It's body like, chills, I, hot and cold spells I and stuff like body that. chills, body yeah, aches, yeah. my neck, my shoulders. Uh, yeah. Blue. I had that, like, so I'm not going to lie, like, there's a possibility I had it, bro. Like, yeah. a legit possibility. So, I don't know if I told you this. So, um, back in January, I had to go home multiple times just because I had a death in the family. I had somebody, somebody who was ill in the family and becoming a death in the family. So, I ended up having to go home. I want to say like two or three times in January. So the cool thing about where we're from and for the people, for the millions and millions of people that are listening or watching on millions. YouTube or uh, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Anchor, iTunes, wherever you get your podcast on this podcast. Um, the cool thing about me and Mike is that we're from the Bay Area. Like we're born and raised in San Francisco, Oakland. Um, we went to high school together. So um, I... So the cool thing about San Francisco is such a most, it's like the New York City of the West Coast. Like it's super duper diverse, super fast paced, yada, yada, yada. So they were talking about this coronavirus. Like they didn't have a name for it just yet, but they were talking about it already like in January. So I remember like like anytime I travel, I always have like the local news on just to kind of see what's going on. What's the weather going to be like, yada, yada, yada. So, I mean, like I was joking with you yesterday about uh, Frank Somerville on uh, KTV. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mornings on, on too. That used to be my show, getting ready for for high school. That's so, the guy right there. My guy, legend, goat, Frank <laughs> yeah. Somerville. Uh, and uh, the black dude, Dennis, but I don't think he's on there anymore. No, but he anyways, retired. He retired. But yeah, uh, Dennis Richmond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I'm getting so I'm getting ready. I was like, oh, okay. So now the news back in January was like, yo, there's like this mysterious virus going on in China. There's a, you know, like a lot of people are just having like this common cold symptoms, and you know, people in California be be on the lookout. Yada yada yada. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, don't you hear it, but you don't really pay attention to it. So I was like, all right, whatever. So blah, 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 blah. So this was like on a Saturday. So I'm getting ready. I go to a 49er game, come back, and I start feeling really, really sick around that evening. And I was like, okay, like, I'm I'm so glad I'm getting on a flight back to Vegas. And that first thing smoking, the very first flight back to Vegas. So I was like, all right, cool. I can sleep it off. I can just relax and just kind of chill, like, get, get rid of it. So um, I get home Sunday morning, catch the first thing flight back to Las Vegas, relax, you know, do all the, you know, all the home remedies, uh, hot, you know, you know, uh, soup, chicken, no soup, you know, drinking a lot of fluids, just keeping fluids down everything. Like I had body aches, fever, um, runny nose, coughing, sneezing, just, you know, all of the cold symptoms. So I was like, all right, cool. So Sunday I sleep it off. Monday I wake up getting ready for work. I was like, I ain't feeling too good to go to work. And like, I don't know what, what I got. So I just text my manager like I do if I were to be sick. So I was like, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it to work. She was like, cool, don't worry about it. She was like, just relax. You know, you've been, you've been through a lot. It's probably just from travel. And I was like, yeah, probably, whatever. Yeah. Tuesday I wake up and I was like, I'm like, so I'm thinking in my head, okay, I got all of Monday. I'm good. I can go back to work. Yeah. Tuesday I was like, bruh, something ain't right because I'm like freaking Wolverine. Like I heal pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even at my age. You know so your I'm body. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, bruh, something ain't right. So I text my manager in the morning. I was like, hey, like I may have to go to urgent care. I ain't coming to work. She was like, yo, um, just do what you gotta do. It's all good. I understand. Go to go to urgent care, bro. First thing they asked, they were like, Have you been to like California or Asia? I was like, I went to California, like, what's the what the hell's the big deal? Like, what's different from this time? Yeah. And they were like, were you in contact with anybody ill or sick? And I said, well, to be honest with you, oh, I'm sorry. I said, to be honest with you, um, 
I was in a VA hospital with a dying family member, so I ain't no telling what the heck I've been around, so I can't really, I don't know. So they were like, oh, okay, so bro, like, they started asking me a whole bunch of questions, they started doing, like, a couple of tests and stuff like that, so I'm sitting there, and they were like, well, it ain't the cold, and it ain't the flu. We don't know what you got. I said, okay, well, what does that mean? They were like, well, we're just going to treat this as, like, a very serious upper respiratory infection. So we're going to put you on these antibiotics and hope that it works, but we can't guarantee you anything. So if it doesn't work within two days, you're going to have to go. You, they said, you're not going to have to come to us. You're going to have to go to the emergency room. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, word. And so I was like, I got to go back to San Francisco. This, so this is Tuesday. This, I'm, and I'm like, I got to go back to San Francisco Friday. Like, I got to get on a flight. Like, am I going to be well enough to do this? Was like, we don't know. But if you ain't better ready by Friday, you're going to have to go to the emergency room. Luckily, I had a morning flight, but I actually pushed it back to the latest flight that I could just so I had an extra, basically, I've got the full day to kind of travel. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm good enough to try. Like, I feel good. It wasn't until Saturday morning where I, that was literally the first time that I woke up from sunup and did something all the way to sundown. And I was like, all right, I'm back to normal. So I was out of the game for about a good week, bro. Dang. So I don't know if I got it, but I mean, they made it seem like I may I had something that was out of the norm. So it was pretty interesting to kind of kind of go through the whole. And then and, and I think like we're talking about January, so nobody really knows. So, yeah, I didn't know what I had. And then now you start seeing all of these symptoms and the, this thing just started ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And it was like, oh, dang, I'll probably did get it, man. So, yeah, it's it's interesting, man. So. I don't know, man. So I guess going into the subject, I mean, we, I mean, it's kind of hard basically, you know, being that our podcast is basically about all kinds of different current event topics, but more towards like wrestling, video games, uh, MMA, boxing and things like and that. And you know what? But, this thing is affecting all of that. Yeah. That's the cold part about it. So yeah. like as much as we want to shed light into <laughs> our podcast, but it's kind of gloomy not to like everything that we kind of use as outlets ain't really there no more so like i have my own sports podcast like that's at a screeching halt right now like i can't hey, hey so you're gonna talk about the nba season next week or what <laughs> i mean like what am i gonna talk about <clears throat> bro like how many more players got tested positive for coronavirus like i don't know what else can be done i i i just i don't know so you got you got a whole bunch of bunch of situations going on but you know you got baseball they they're they they suspended their thing they got uh even the UFC card this weekend, uh, it's in I think it's in yeah it's in Brazil, uh, and they they caught a few cases out there. So now they're the fights are still going down, but um, empty uh, arena. Dana White just announced something going on. There's a fight that's taking place that's getting moved back to Vegas. Um, oh really? I don't, yeah, I don't know what it is, and it's not 249. Which... Dang it! Because I'm like if it's if it's 249, please do it. I'm kind of hoping it do. is. I'm hoping it is, but Vegas, Las Vegas, the state of Nevada just declared a state of emergency today. So, actually, like literally all, I mean, you know, not you know, this is a you know our podcast, so I can kind of go into it. But like even every day, like I work at a university, so I work at UNLV, and all day, every day this week, I've been in meetings about contingency plans and getting my de- my department ready for, you know, the doomsday kind of thing. So it's been very very interesting. So. I think even Nevada, like, they've canceled... I don't know if they canceled, like, the... Um, it's going to be really interesting. They canceled, like, nightclubs out here. Uh-huh. Um, Vegas shows and that's stuff like Vegas, that. That's what That's how they make yeah, their money, right? Yeah, I mean. so I know gambling. So here's another thing, like, not to talk about sports, but, like, the NCAA just canceled their NCAA tournament. So what yeah. happens to all the people that put their bets in? Like, I'm pretty sure Vegas ain't going to be hitting, hitting people up with the IOU because that's a lot of revenue they're about to lose out on this city, so... I don't know what's about, like, there's just such a snowball effect in everything that's taking place right now with our day-to-day operations, so I don't know how the city's gonna, I don't know, so, like, the NFL draft is supposed to be happening at the end of April, and that's, like, they're saying, like, either six to 700,000 people is what they're expecting, and they don't even know if that's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, uh, all of the hockey games here have been canceled. Basically, the city that I live, right outside of Las Vegas, they've canceled all that large gatherings, and another city out here, they just did it, so... I don't know what the strip is doing. That's kind of why I wanted to see what the new, I was out doing some things earlier today, but I went to the grocery store right around the corner from my house, Mike. I've never seen a grocery store that busy, that empty ever in life. And I'm talking about day before Thanksgiving, 
right. Christmas. Like I've never seen a grocery store that like, bro. I'd be seeing like you. You know how we like see the videos of like New Orleans and stuff like that before a hurricane. Yeah, bro. I witnessed that today. Like that's how serious it is. I, like it's serious. That's serious. We've. I've been told that there's people from California that are driving all the way to Las Vegas just to get pallets of water because California has no more water. What? That's what I was told today. Man, I, I thankfully I, I've I've had uh we have like three, three uh thirty six packs of water in in the um. We have this with this closet, call it the Harry Potter closet, because it's like, like a little like what Harry Potter was living in in the first uh, Harry Potter movie. <laughs> so we have a bunch in there already. We have it stacked. So <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm I think I'm up to about five. Um, but yeah, like it's it's bro, it's it's wild. Like I had to go to the Air Force Base to get water because <laughs> no Target, no grocery stores, no Walmart, no Costco's, no Sam's Clubs, none of that had pallets of water out here in the city, bro. I feel like it's the zombie apocalypse, man. Where's my shotgun so, at? Yeah, that double tap. Crazy, what you know? is that? Like two to the head or whatever they say. So, yeah, double tap or whatever. Double tap. Say. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be really interesting to see like what happens. But I mean, one pushback that we can kind of talk about on the show is, bro. Like I, so I'm so I sound so hypocritical saying that. So as I'm kind of like gearing towards being on isolation and working remotely and everything. And I think apparently you are as well for the next. I am. I have the time. computer set up now. Well, I have. Are I you guys? Work te- off- are you guys permanently working, or until further notice, working from home, or is it kind of for my me? Choice? Well, so so it's kind of weird because I went to my I went to my office today uh, to get my because I have dual monitors and I just been working mm-hmm. off my laptop this whole week, which is yeah, no bueno. I feel so it. I feel yeah. It, yeah. So I went in today because my boss said I can, I have authority, not authority. I'm authorized to the well, same thing. I'm authorized to use like the dual monitors and the dock. So I went to get it, and then um, when I got there on the door, it said tomorrow everybody's working from home. So it's like a test run thing maybe, but Got it. um yeah. I tried, so trying, I tried trying to use one of that as an excuse for tomorrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wasn't having it, bro. So yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you were so you you've been trying to to start working I've from home, pu- right? I've been pushing it for the last two days that we should have been working from home. So I kinda like gave I went like all in with my poker ships today and was like, This is the reason why we need to go working from home um we need to do a test drive um yada 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 and like they shot it down real quick but i mean i mean like the type of job you have you could work from home no problem and still so here's what i'm hoping and i mean i'm gonna be trying completely transparent i don't care who's watching or listening at this (laughs) point um honestly i think this was a perfect time for us to kind of this was the writings on the wall because we've been trying to gear towards working remotely anyways because i do teach a couple of classes on campus but like now that we're not on campus or so they're saying that we have the choice to work from like they're sending all the students home because spring break starts theoretically tomorrow because who the hell goes to school the day before spring break um so they're sending that they're sending everyone to spring break starting on monday the following monday the 23rd school's supposed to resume online so it's going to be virtual but they said that staff members are supposed to be coming to work however they want management to be flexible with their staff members. If they want to work remotely, then they should come up with some type of contingency plan. My yeah. plan is already in play. Like, it's already been drafted up. Like, it was ready yesterday. I just had to do a presentation today. I had to, like, basically talk to everyone to see what the downstream effects was. Is it cool? Is it not cool? Yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, what if our backup plans are? What if our backup to the backup plans are? Who are we going to contact? Like, I had to basically map all of that out. I had to meet with telecom today. Oh, I, uh, our IT department. Um, so it was just a hot mess. So I got everything down, uh, not to mention I'm a procrastinator, so I kind of like to wait till the last minute to do this stuff. So, <laughs> um, so I got everything done, presented, it looks good, bang. And then they say basically students. So it was a very just uh, interesting email that was sent out. But now that HR has kind of came back and kind of cleaned it up and said, that, no, we have to be flexible with our staff members as well, that we can't just say students can't come to work. If our staff members don't feel like coming to work. And if they choose, if you're able to, Basically, they're saying if you're able to work remotely and you already have a contingency plan in place, management has to be flexible with you. So basically, I'm going to be working remotely for the foreseeable future. So I say that saying that, cool, now I can start having that flexibility of working from home. You know, um, yeah, you know, it's going to be kind of different for me. I've never worked from home before. Like, I've, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm sick, I can kind of pull up my laptop and just check something real quick. But as far as like legitimately like working, working. It's going to be interesting, like giving a class online. I've never done that before. So that's going to be coming into play pretty soon. But that being said, everybody's canceled things, Mike. Like everything is canceled. 
Except for the WWE. Like, <laughs> I know. What, what are they do? What are they waiting for? They but they see. Then they cancel XFL already. They canceled XFL. They're moving SmackDown from Detroit, Michigan to the Performance Center. WWE had, man, a hey, Vince thinks this is a work. <laughs> so 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 there's this other uh, side of me that's like, okay, WrestleMania is in like two weeks, uh, yeah. April the fifth or sixth. First week of, of April, right? First yeah, Sunday so. of April, which is like the sixth, I believe, fifth or sixth. I don't know. I'm supposed to be going to this, and I'm not gonna lie, I am scared. You know what, list right now, and I'm so torn on it. If Vince plans on moving forward with this, I don't know if I should go or not. I really don't know. And so I need everybody to follow me at Money Compton on Instagram or follow me at Twitter at Eric T. Compton. And I need y'all's advice to know if I should, if this somehow Vince McMahon is able to just say, I'm this McMahon guy, Dad, I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm so torn, Mike. Like, what would you do like in this situation? So apparently, so for the people that don't know, get a hazard suit. Uh, uh, ESPN has already acknowledged that Vince McMahon is basically like the city of Tampa Bay has been like, okay, we're not going to cancel WrestleMania. However, um, we're kind of leaving it in the WWE's hands. So well, if they want, wow, really? I, I, They're giving them that much power? Well, the, oh, no. Here's how it went. The governor said, "I'm not canceling anything as far as like large events go. I'm leaving that up to the city." The city was more like, we're going to still monitor this very, very closely. But as of right now, we have no intention on canceling the uh, WrestleMania. Jeez. So um, here's, the, here's the quirky thing about the WWE. And kind of, it works for them, but it doesn't work for them sometimes. So they've had two instances where they, they risked it all. One time it panned out really, really well. And the other time it looked really, really bad. So I don't know if you remember this, but September 11th, that was on a Tuesday hmm. when that happened. Thursday, WWE SmackDown was the only large gathering place that actually oh, aired. Yeah, I remember that. And aired that. And they actually were the first, like, show, sports, like, anything as far as a public gathering. And they actually hit it out the park and had SmackDown. And it, was, it wasn't it was like a traditional SmackDown show. It was more of a tribute show. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do um, remember that. Kinda, yeah. So they did SmackDown, and they killed it. Now, fast forward, I believe it was last year, the Saudi Arabian prince, like, killed, like, some type of American, some type of journal- journalist, uh-huh. yeah. some type of journalist, and everybody, like, sponsors and everybody else was pulling out of these deals left and right and said, nah, we're not messing with the Saudi government, and Vince McMahon was like, nope, we still, if it happened on Tuesday, they was on an airplane out there on Thursday, and a <laughs> lot of people, yep. a lot of even superstars was like, nah, bro, like, we can't, we yeah, can't is. go. Like, a lot they of people want, yeah, dropped lot of out at the go. last minute. Yeah, yeah a lot of them want dropped out. Yep. I remember like, that. I know Daniel Bryan was super-duper vocal, Kevin Owens, and and I think due to Sammy Zayn's uh, either ethnicity or religion, he's not even allowed to go out there. Oh. So Kevin Owens and Sammy Zayn, obviously, are best friends. So Kevin Owens was like, nah, bro, if my boy ain't going out there, I ain't going out there. I think even Roman Reigns pulled out. Um, it was a lot of people, so they had, like... Uh, I don't know, a whole bunch of has-beens. Uh, I think that's the main event that had DX versus Taker and Kane. Oh, my was, God. I that think that's the event. I so think it bad. Was that one. That it was, was really bad. Ugh. It was really bad. Kane's mask fell off, and it, 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 was, it was bad. <laughs> and I think wreck. Triple H like, tore his labrum or something like that. Like It was bad. Yeah. So And it, it was just really, really bad PR. So now Vince McMahon is trying to go two for three, and I'm pretty sure he's going to gamble – and here's the cool thing. Here, here's the weird thing about it. In Tampa Bay, the city of Tampa Bay, their hands are tied. Tampa Bay has paid the W. So when these cities host WrestleMania, the cities actually pay the WWE. It's basically like a Super Bowl. These cities put a bid in, and Vince McMahon gets, basically gets to pick who he wants to have WrestleMania in. Yeah. So I don't know how much Tampa Bay put their bid in, but it's like, okay, I'm going to put down $2 million for my bid. Hoping that we end up revenueing anywhere between I don't know five to ten like ten to twenty million dollars in revenue based off of hotels, flights, uh, you know, restaurants and all that stuff. So it's basically no different than a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So not to mention now here's the trickle down effect. Now you have like Ring of Honor that's supposed to have like a little um, they were supposed to have a promotion there. You had five shows WWE alone, um, Raw, SmackDown, NXT Takeover. The Hall of Fame and WrestleMania. That's five different venues that they're going to sell out. One venue is already going to have 70,000 people there. So you have Access, which is a convention. 
that's going to bring a lot of people there. You also have the Superstore, where right now merchandise for the WWE ain't doing too good. They're probably at like all time lows right now for sales. Mm. So, so now the, Tampa, the city of Tampa Bay, they're they're in a straitjacket. It's like, all right, we ju- we're just going to basically just spend a whole bunch of boot bunch of money and miss out on uh, miss out on WrestleMania. You know, so they can't really say now nah, we're going to. I mean, they should. I mean, I, I think they should. I, yeah. I think it's the right thing to do. But then, yeah, like, what do you? And so, so Vince, there's a there's um, I think I saw an article saying that Vince McMahon has a contingency plan if yeah. WrestleMania gets canceled. So my thing is, well, where the hell are you going to move seventy thousand people? Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't put them in the WWE Performance Center or Orlando. No. It's only like two hundred fifty people that can fit in there. So who gets to go and watch WrestleMania? Like, there's a lot of things That's that are going to be too tied. many. Yeah, way too many people to juggle to just bro. have a contingency plan. There's no contingency plan with seventy thousand people, bro. No, not to impossible. mention you can't really, really move it out of the city of Tampa Bay because they paid for it to have it in the city. Correct. So now we're talking about a breach of contract. Mm-hmm. Um. So my thing is, do they move it back? Do they cancel and then just give Tampa Bay their their deposit back? Like, what is going to happen? Delay it? Well, that would be weird. That'll screw up all the it's time. It's going to screw everything up, bro. It's yeah. going to screw everything up. Because that's literally up. like their end of the year, and then it starts over. It's if they delay year. it, it's, it's and then the if they the delay it, year. yeah, and if they delay it, um, who knows how long they have to delay it for. So it's a hot mess. To May? To May? I would assume May? Maybe. May? Mm-hmm. May? But then, okay, so here's the thing. So May, we're talking about Tampa Bay. Central to South Florida, Central Florida, it's gonna be John Blaze, bro. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I wouldn't even want to go out there in May to watch WrestleMania, bro. Like, it's gonna be by like 80 some degrees out there for six, seven hours. <laughs> seven, no, like nine to ten hours, bro. True, because the super, because yeah. the pre-show is gonna be two hours long, and then the actual show is probably gonna be about another five. How the hell is so a pre-show like, two hours? I mean, <laughs> bro. bro, it's so a pre-show. I don't, anyways. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know what they like. They're I sound so messed up saying I think they're better off. I don't I mean they can, I mean they, they, I don't know what they can do right now. You know like, what they should do? It's a lose-lose situation. I, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. They should just have um Vince McMahon live stream reading the scripts of every match like a story like a, like a story tale um <laughs> story tale yeah, reading something and, bro so No, nah, that'd be goof. That that'd be hella funny if they did that, man. Like Vince just goes, yeah. all right. This is uh, this is Roman Reigns versus uh, Goldberg. This is what's gonna happen. <laughs> Roman spears him five times, and Goldberg rocks up, and Jack hammers Roman. Roman hits the Superman punch. So, I, I don't know what's. Good. I don't know, we, man. I, we are in uncharted territories and talking about in just pop culture, sports. Like we are in just something that we. I mean, the closest to ever, I've been trying to think all. The, I mean, really all week. Like, what's the closest thing that I can think of as far as things like this taking place? And I had to pick September 11th, but it was like, yeah, at least September 11th, like, that was just one day. Yeah, it was just boom. And then, yeah, and it's a huge impact at that one moment. This is like a slow build. And it's just, yeah, it's like it's just, it's just like a, um, it's like a a calm before the, like, right before a tornado hits where it's just quiet, very, very quiet and just, very eerie and that's kind of where we're at so like you know we just don't know what the hell we're walking into tomorrow like i feel like today really wasn't as bad as uh, yesterday, yesterday was uh yesterday was uh, yesterday was haywire bro like the risk, yeah. the risk assessment went from low to high like mm-hmm. immediately bro so like everything was kind of building up and i think yesterday was the boom drop the mic yeah. and now here's what so i think today you know when you see the nba getting canceled and then like hockey gets canceled baseball gets canceled soccer yeah yeah it's like okay like it, it, it makes sense. Like uh, yeah. uh, we we have seen it before. Yeah. So now, like you know, I think the NBA at the bare bare minimum, they're pushing the season. They're suspending it everything for thirty days. Thirty days would mean April twelfth. WrestleMania is, I believe, on April the fifth. So like, I don't yeah. know. So we're talking about anywhere so four, six, so five through twelve. So that's additional weeks. So really, WrestleMania is about three weeks away. Uh, about three and a, uh, about two and a half, three weeks away. Yeah, so it is that close. It's it about is. two weeks away. Jeez. So I can see why they haven't really canceled it yet because I think a lot can change in two weeks. Like baseball is changing their start time for two weeks. I think baseball is going to start at the end of the month. I think they're just pushing the season back two weeks in. So yeah. which baseball actually suspended all league play around September 11th for five days anyway. So 
Um, it's uh, man, I just I don't know, bro. Like this is just I I, I hope I kind of hope that we're able to figure out some type of cure, I mean, a cure or a vaccination or something to kind of slow this thing down. Because I think, like I was telling you earlier today, like, we need some type of outlet. Like, right now, <laughs> it ain't no outlets right now, Be like, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so, I mean, I'm about well, to... I think one thing that's slowing it down is all these precautious things that we're doing. And they're rightfully uh, Canceling so. everything, which makes sense. I mean... Some people think it's a little, a little extreme. It probably is, but that's a good thing to try to slow it down. So um, I agree, I agree. So uh, I thought we'd kind of change the gear, but I mean, for everybody out there, um, you know, take care of yourself. Like, wash your hands, wash your ass. You know, do something. You know, make sure y'all are conducting per- pro- proper hygiene and uh, you know, just do what you're supposed to do and Common don't, sense don't stuff. Go- common sense and all my people that are here like hustle man like they got a pallet of water they want to try to sell it for a dub that you got it for three dollars like come on bruh we talking <laughs> about some water like you got a roll of toilet paper that you trying to sell for three dollars like yeah on, on the facebook marketplace as well it was a joke though it wasn't serious as one dude was selling a big bottle of hand sanitizer for 65 dollars so so i, well, I offered somebody's... him i offered him a trade for uh five rolls of toilet paper what are they saying nothing <laughs> So I mean, just 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 ignorant stuff like that. Like I mean, yeah. Because it, it, I mean, I hope it don't get ugly. But like I can, it, from what I've seen the last two days and the meetings that I've been in, yeah, it can get ugly. Like it can get. It probably ugly. will. It's gonna get worse before it get better. No, well, I would say this. I don't think people, the nation's ready to hear. Well, the people that think this is a joke, y'all don't want to hear what martial law was really all about. I'm going to put it like that. So all the people out here thinking that it's cool, you know, oh, we're going to be working remotely, yada, 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 and, you know, this ain't really serious. The media is pumping us up. Bro, like, this, this, from what I've been told, like, this virus can be pretty pretty lethal. Like, all everybody out here wearing these little masks, if you ain't got a damn gas mask on with a legit seal on it, you're wasting your time. Well, the masks like, are sick. useless anyways, unless you're yeah. actually sick. I mean, because yeah. the whole point of it is to... Stop and it's not even an airborne. It's not an airborne thing. It's it's by contact. So a mask ain't doing nothing. Yeah. So if unless you got like a legit military grade gas mask like that N95, the, no, it ain't it ain't working, bro. Yeah. It ain't helping you. So I don't know where y'all. It ain't gonna help you all that out. So anywho, that being said, I thought we change up the uh, change up the subject, man. So you're a homeowner, recently homeowner. Congrats. Yep. Yep. So yep. I thought we wanna. What's the goofiest like? homeowners like rookie mistake you've done so far oh i mean yeah so i don't know how, how to repair anything right so we moved into this new spot and uh you know every Me new too. i'm the same every new home that you buy comes with a should come with a one-year home warranty for like right for things in the house that may need to be replaced if they break down within the year right so first week i think we're in here uh toilet was like like leak, like sound like it was leaking. So mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, time to call uh, <laughs> home repair." And it was like, you know, it's like, I think the the uh, you gotta pay like seventy five bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. I think it's seventy five dollars. And then someone comes in and does it and repairs it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Homeowner's yeah. warranty. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yep. oh, yeah. And then and then like a month later, the other toilet started making noise, same noise. And so I did it again. Pay another seventy five dollars. Well. Then, then the the one in our bedroom started going off, so I was like, you know what? I'm tired of paying this damn seventy five dollars. So I went in there and looked at it, and they did a little like YouTube search, and I'm like, actually, this ain't that hard to fix. So I fixed it myself this last time, but then all I'm thinking about is I just spent a hundred and fifty dollars on the other two toilets. So I didn't even have to. So I guess you live and you learn. It was a it was an epic fail because I spent way more money than all I need to do is spend spend like ten bucks for this kit and just replace yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But like for me, like toilets are scary though. Like I'm I'm scared yeah. of water and I'm scared of fire when it comes to a home. So I, sure. I don't like messing with the stuff. But it is it's like it's like foolproof, man. Like to replace, like if it's something little like in the toilet, it's it's not that hard. So it was a fail, man. But now I'm a pro. I'm a pro. Bro. Now, so. All right, so mine wasn't – well, man, mine is going to sound a lot worse than yours, man. Like, at least you made an effort. <laughs> um, 
So, all right. So this was maybe like a month or so ago. So I pulled up. So I don't know what I was doing, but I know I got off work early. I got left work early. I might have been, I might have flammed off and made up some crazy ass excuse and got out of work early. I don't know. But I know I was like, I was here before five o'clock. So I know I was catting off. So I pull up to the house. So I get out the car. Um, I think I was just dropping something off. Like, I think I had a a trunk load of stuff and I was just going to drop it off at the house, keep it pushing and go back to my old house. So I pull up to the house and I hear like this, like, oh, snap, that's the fire alarm. So I kind of like look around, make sure nothing's smoking. I go through the side, let my little gate through the side door. Um, to go through the backyard. I walked the backyard. I was like, okay, the, the pool system thing, it's not overheated or anything like that. It's not smoking. I walk around and make sure like the back of the house isn't on fire. So I was like, all right, I don't smell no smoke. I don't see no fire. I right, let's go in the house. So I go in the house. Bro, every single smoke detector is just going off. Dee, dee, dee. I was like, okay. <clears throat> like, what the heck's going on? So um, I, 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 I'm like, mind you, I'm only like five, six, so I'm hella short. Yeah. So I'm trying to, like, get on my tippy toes and try to, like, pu- push the reset button on it. But, like, I can't get to it. Mind you, there's no furniture in this house. So things just going off. I was like, God, dang, like, what do I do? So I go out. I don't know what I made me do this. But I went outside of my backyard. And, like, I hear my neighbors. And they're like, God, dang, I wish somebody would hurry up and turn off these smoke detectors. It'd be going off all freaking day long. I was like, dang, I feel kind of bad. Mm-hmm. So I was like, bro, I got to figure this out. So. I actually had my grandmother's dining room set actually moved over here. So what I did is I took one of the dining room chairs, got on top, got stood on, stood on top of that, unscrewed the top and smoke detectors. I didn't realize they're connected to the power. So I couldn't pull the power cord off because I, I wasn't tall enough and the chair wasn't tall enough. Yeah. I was like, God dang, like all of these are doing this? So like every single smoke detector is doing it. So I was like, man, like this don't make no sense. So I was like, my godmom is usually like my save my lifeline. I was like, I can't call her for something as stupid as smoke detectors going off. Like, E, you got to figure this out, bro. Like, you can't call nobody. Like, you have to figure this out yourself. So, like, I'm sitting there trying to, like, still, I was like, okay, I'm about to just incredible Hulk this thing and just yank the whole thing. But I was like, bro, like, that might be more damage. Like, you know, that could be an electrical, you know, like, a lot more money out your pocket. So I go outside, try to turn off all the, you know, the circuit boxes to break the circuit breakers. That don't work. I was like, okay, so, bro. I call 911, man. <laughs> <laughs> I called 911, so they was like, 911, emergency, how can I help you? I was like, well, first of all, I'm good. It's really not an emergency, but I don't know the non-emergency line. My smoke detectors are going off in my house, and I don't know how to cut these damn things off. And the lady was like, oh, like, she was super cool with it. She was like, okay, I'll just put you over to the non-emergency line. And so um, I was like, all right, bet. So... <laughs> So the dining emergency line comes in. They were like, yo, like, what's going on? And I told him, I was like, yo, like, I just moved in this house. I don't know why my smoke detectors are going off. Like, I can't figure this out. Can someone come out and just fix it? It was like, yeah, no problem. Like, it's cool. We'll send, we'll send somebody out. I was like, all right, cool. So I was like, all right, how am I going to, like, I can't sit in this house and listen to this, like, alarm going off the whole time. Like, what am I going to do? So I go outside the house, and I'm posted up by my car, so I don't want to look like a douchebag. Like, I'm trying to look cool, even though I'm looking like I'm like, really sounding lame. I just called 911. The fire department's coming. <laughs> yeah. Bruh, they come in a freaking Decepticon, bro. That was the biggest fire truck I've ever seen in my life, bro. They come <laughs> rolling down the street. All the neighbors are now coming out of the house looking like, what's going on? <laughs> Six firemen jump out of this Decepticon. I was like, bro, like, it cannot get any worse, yo. So six firemen jump out the car. And, like, when I say this thing was, like, Decepticon, like, when they opened the door, the little steps to the, tr- to the truck, like, it folded out like automatically yeah. so like the thing is actually like legit transforming so like six fire the, the six firemen come out of like what's going on i was like bro like i just bought this house like i don't know what i'm doing um like the smoke detectors are going off like can you help me they were like yeah no problem so dude comes in he was like oh um it looks like it's connected to the power i was like yeah like i don't have anything to like pull them off like i'm too short so they bring in the ladder and the guy goes when was this house built and it was built in 2005 and he goes have you changed the batteries or anything i was like bro like i legit just moved here like I was like, I don't even live here yet. Like, I just have the keys to this place. And he goes, oh, okay, well, just to let you know, this house was built in 05, but these smoke detectors that were installed in 04. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was like, yeah, the battery's dead on these. So basically what you need to do, like, when the battery dies, the alarm goes off and it sets all of them off because all of them are installed at the same time. I was like, bruh. So they yanked all of them down. So they yanked all of the five smoke detectors down. So here's where the thing starts getting really, like, wacky. So I don't know why I've heard this rumor, but I'm going to ask you this, and you're probably going to look at me stupid because everyone else has looked at me stupid. There's an urban legend that said that if you have a broken smoke detector, 
You can take it to a fire department and they'll replace it for you. Have you heard that before? No. Okay, well, maybe I just made that up in my head because I asked the dude. So I was like, hey, don't y'all replace fire smoke detectors? Y'all ain't got nothing in the truck? And the dude was looking at me like, no. And I'm looking at him like, what do you mean, no? Like, guys, and I'm looking at him. I was like, yo, like, you guys are the fire department. Ain't you all supposed to have smoke detectors? So I'm looking at him like, why? <laughs> I mean, hey, why that don't... makes sense, actually. So yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, why don't you have smoke detectors? Like, I learned this when I was a kid. And the guy's looking at me like, you're a dumbass. Like, why would I have? Why would I have? So we're looking at each other like this the whole time. I'm like, so you guys don't have any smoke detectors? He was like, nah. So. <laughs> They're then, already then, there. They're already there. Like, man, this isn't even a fire. What the hell are we here for? Exactly. <laughs> now this bro, dude totally. asking for smoke detectors. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, um, so then somehow I was like, well, maybe like since this is so stupid, I was like, am I gonna get billed for y'all coming out here and y'all gonna have to fight a fire? So I asked him. I was like, yo, am I gonna get billed for this? And it was like, nah, bro, you're good. You're not gonna get a bill. I was like, all right, cool. So, bro, I go straight into like panic mode. I go to the nearest Home Depot. I bought like. 15 smoke detectors. You know how much smoke detectors cost, bro? I haven't bought one new before. Bro, a two-pack is for a, a bill. What? A two-pack at uh at Home Depot where I mean for a bill, bro. It's 50 a pop? Apparently. Why don't you just replace the batteries? You can't just replace the batteries? Bro, so I tried replacing. I don't know what I was doing, bro, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you some new smoke detectors. Ain't nobody got time for 20-year-old <laughs> smoke detectors, yo. Why I got to replace you know everything. It's weird, though. Like, uh, at, at our old place... When the batteries died on the old smoke detectors, all they would they wouldn't like go off. They would just go, eh, like, like yeah, make yeah. little deep, like a really el- right. hella annoying sound, and it would right. constantly like every but few moments. This was, so the batteries actually used as a backup because there's actual power being Our supplied wire. into the. Oh, uh, bro, okay. it was so bootsy. So actually, so what I did is like, uh, my uh, someone was like, "Yo, like you can get a four pack at Costco for like eighty bucks." I was like. Pfft. Bet. So I took all of them. From, uh, I spent like five hundred dollars <laughs> on smoke detectors. Uh, but I bought like fifteen smoke detectors. And I only needed ten. I bought fifteen smoke detectors. I bought like a fire. I bought like four fire extinguishers. I bought a pickaxe. Like I went on full like <laughs> firefighting mode, bro. Oh, like I dropped like four to five hundred dollars at Home Depot, and then someone was like, "Bro, like you can go to Costco and get a four pack for like a bill." So I ended up going back and like spent like 150 on like 12 smoke detectors and just installed them myself. They're not connected to the hardware because I don't ever want that again because if that goes off in the middle of the night. Like I may burn this house down seriously. So, so I got the, just a battery joint. So when they go off, then I can just replace them for now on. So that was yeah. my rookie homeowner's mistake, bro. Like I went on full. Nah, bro. Like I don't have no. Like if I had a ladder, I think I could have figured it out myself. But yeah. I ain't have nothing, bro. Like I mean, yeah, I didn't know what... it was an empty house at that point. It's an empty house, bro. Like I literally yeah. only have like eight dining room chairs. Like what else am I supposed to do? <laughs> that's crazy, dude. So yeah, so that, okay, that's... mine isn't that bad. I mean, I just I was just stupid and couldn't figure out I could have uh, replaced the fixed toilet by myself. Well, nah, they're both they're they're both really dumb. But your yours yours just was crazy because at least I didn't have a plumber. Well, I did have a plumber come. I guess it's crazier when a whole fire, like a like a whole huge fire truck Bruh, comes the through. The squadron came. <laughs> the squadron came. The si- did they the have neighbors- the sirens on? Thank goodness, no. But the neighbors <laughs> okay. were coming out, and they was like, "Yo, like who the hell is this new guy?" So I feel like I was on. Uh, you remember that one uh, music video with P Diddy, and it was like with Ben Stiller, and he was like, "Yo, Papa Diddy Pop, welcome yeah, to what, the neighborhood." What song was that? Uh, we Ooh. ain't. Go no, when no, no, way. no. Okay, bad so was that, Yeah. So when they came down in the fire truck, I was like, bro, like, what is going on? Like, did y'all have to break? I told you all nothing's on fire. Like, no, I'm perfectly safe. I told you immediately, I am good. I'm not dying. All is well. And yet they brought this big old, bro, it was bad, bro. Like, <laughs> you, yeah, you, was... you gave him a disclosure in the beginning. Like, hey, this is I told him everything. I kept, yeah, I told him one. I kept it one. And I was like, yo, like, I sound really stupid right now, but I didn't know what else to do. Like, yo, I need some fire help right now because it's fire alarms are going off. So, yeah, bro. Like, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, at least yeah. you don't have to worry about that now. You replaced them all and I stuff. I did. So. I replaced them all myself, installed them all. There, so they're good to go. So yeah, you're a pro at that now. So, hey, man, yeah. you you got some knowledge through that um fun situation. Yeah, I, so. I, you you want to hear, like, this is something crazy. It's not a rookie mistake or anything like that, but it's just – um bad timing because when we, before we moved we, we were looking for a new house which this ended up being we, we were in a, a house, like a um, our prior house we we're selling it at the same time right so 
it's, it was such it was like a stressful time just to like wait you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. our house is on the market we're right, waiting right. for a potential buyer right and before we get a potential buyer we can't really even be looking at homes because what kind of offer are we going to put down is contingent right, right, upon right, right, getting right. a buyer which we don't have yet you know what i'm saying yeah. so if we got one i don't even want to talk about them they're they were the biggest pain in the pain in the butts that ever so anyways it's just crazy. Like the timing was terrible, man. We we're like on the on the in the process of moving, right? We we got in contract there. We got in contract here. I was mm-hmm. like packing everything to 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 move, and mm-hmm. I think literally like it was like three or four days before we moved, the coils on our garage door at our house that we were selling, and this was after the inspections were done. Everything was in the clear. Everything was oh, good. Oh yeah. The coil snapped, right? And I didn't know what the hell what it was. It like freaked me out because the, the the garage door literally just went and it's like just slammed on the ground. I'm like, oh snap! Because you know, once everything's clear, inspections the home good. Home home inspection. It's, yeah, that's curtains, bro. Yeah, and the buyers they they did another walkthrough, like a personal mm-hmm. walkthrough. So I was like, oh, everything's great. And then the freaking garage door just breaks down on me. I'm like, oh crap! Like, what do I do? You know? So I ended up, I did end up calling like a um, garage door. Uh, um, repair man and this yeah. was this happened at like 8 p.m at night so i was like oh, i was like cause my, yeah because my car was in there and i'm like wait how 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 am i how supposed to get to work, work? Yeah. yeah yeah right out? yeah i mean you can manually do it but it was like it was all bent and stuff is all messed up I'm really like, oh, yeah snap yeah so i was like what am i supposed to do here so he actually came that night and he said yeah oh, wow. so so I, I i used to live in a, a little pud um all the homes were like built similar, cheapest material possible, all that stuff. Right, right, so right, 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 right. it was um, you. He, the guy was telling me usually like with garage doors they put two coils, like one mm-hmm. to just in case you know, just to strengthen it. This one yeah. only had one coil, so it just you know, and it wasn't an old house. I think it was built in like two thousand and five or six. It wasn't that old, so and it just snapped. So. It was it was it freaked me out, man. I was like, oh no, man. Do we have now? It's, I'm gonna get all stressed out again. I'm like, oh crap. Like, what's what the thing? bro. But but it wasn't as serious as it seemed, you know. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, like with with, with home ownership. It's like when you used yeah. to rent. It's like, oh man, my garage door is busted. Yeah. Hey, landlord, uh, come fix Let this me, yeah, right now. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. But when when you actually own a home, it's like, oh yeah, wait, I'm I am the landlord. Oh snap. Oh hey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here. So, yeah. So it was just hopefully, that, that yeah. was crazy situation. Just timing wise, it was just it was just brutal. But yeah, yeah. So, so far everything's been good here in the in the crib. So uh, yeah, yeah. So but that was like I mean when you walk like you've only had the house for like a week and the smoke detectors are going off like it was it was yeah. it was a stupid rookie mistake. But like you said, homeowning you either gonna spend a lot of money or you are gonna have to get smart and start saving a lot of money. So like you said, you kind of got. You know, over spending seventy five dollars the the the, the copay. Like he was like, nah, bump this. I'm gonna figure it out. And for you, it kind of cashed out. For me, luckily, I haven't had to use my uh, copay yet. So yeah. I mean, I can't really think of anything. I did buy the extension, the extended warranty, um, for my pool. But even then, like, I don't know what they're. I mean, I don't know. So so far, like, it looks like everything's in good shape. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but but uh. But uh, you got anything else today, man? On this kind of condensed, this, I mean, hey, it's ain't really... forty minutes ain't that condensed, man. We... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to kind of. It's been a little, you know. Everything revered. has been canceled, bro. Like, yeah, you know... except for WrestleMania. <laughs> Yet, let's see what happens in the uh, well. Um, next the, few like, days. the EDC festival out here in Las Vegas, they're saying that they're moving forward with it, but that's not until mid May, like the middle of May. So yeah, there's some time to really see what's going down. Yeah. Okay. So they're saying they're moving forward, and that's like over a hundred thousand thousand people out here. So, I mean, I mean, we can see what ends up happening within the next five days. It can get either uglier, or finally we can kind of see like some kind of regression and. Hopefully, but you know, everyone yeah. just kind of stay vigilant and stay safe and just look after each other because you know, it can get a little wonky right here. Like, we don't know what's gonna like. We are in, like, de- I mean, we're not in the most dire situation. Like, I mean, obviously, like, when the news, I'm just waiting for like the news to kind of go like, Ooh, like, it just uh-huh. kind of goes off screen. Like, I hope it doesn't get to that part. But, I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't think it'll get that bad. I think it's, um, I don't think it's gonna get that bad either, but we just don't really know. So, um, but yeah. we'll see what ends up happening, man. Yeah. So, tell me where can find you at, bro. 
You can find me on Instagram, Michael Mania. That's M I K E O M A N I A. Uh, Twitter, I am Michael One. How about yourself, man? Uh, you can find me at the Instagram at Money Compton. You can also find me at the Twitterverse at Eric T. Compton. Yo, quick uh, thingy, uh, since we didn't get to talk about it. UFC 248 was a lot better than I expected, even though I didn't know a lot of those people. Yeah. Uh, the women's match was possibly by far the greatest match I've ever seen, that men's or women. Crazy. It was yeah. epic. Um, yeah. That chick looked like she had a heat. That chick with the hematoma on her head, she looked like something off Joanna. of Marshall Packs. Yeah. yeah. But she showed heart. Dude, she showed yeah. heart. Uh, uh, Mag, the, the Bang Bang chick, uh, the Chinese chick. Wait, she, she's, yeah, she's pretty dope. Um, yeah. I'm cool with Style Bender winning the way he won. Like, what did you expect him to do? This guy was a freaking pit bull that he was facing, and like that's the thing. He was just standing here the whole time. Like, that's what I got a problem. Like, you out here, like you out here complaining that nobody was throwing. Like, you literally came out, and I think Style Bender was actually kind of expecting him to come out of the gates and just come running swinging, but he literally stood in the middle of the octagon. Yeah. Hard up and didn't do nothing for two minutes. Like, what was you expecting? Like, yeah, you kind of dictated the way the fight was gonna go. So Starbin was like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna take the Floyd May with the approach and just score, hit significant strikes, and just ca- kind of calculate what I can do. I'm not gonna throw with this guy because I know this guy will probably take my head off. So I'm just yeah. gonna kind of go I mean, in. You don't want to do that some- anyway, right? I mean, like, because Izzy's like a good counter striker. Yoel was looking for counter strikes, so they're literally just at a standstill. But is he did try to engage. He didn't want to overextend and then get right. caught, right? So right. you don't want to be stupid about it. So And it's so it's... hard to follow up one of the probably top three, top top three to five all time great fights. Like it's up there. Dude, like, you know what? After that the 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 co main, I was like, Oh, we got another fight. <laughs> that's exactly how we oh, felt oh, when we were at the yeah. fight. We were at the fight. Was like, oh yeah, that's right. So it's so yeah. hard to follow up an all-time great U- MMA fa- match with you know possibly Anderson Silva 2.0 um, with with uh, Izzy. So yep. I'm not really mad at the way Izzy kind of. I mean, Romero didn't win that fight. Not Izzy yet. did enough to kind of retain, but yeah. Romero he didn't set the pace. He didn't do anything. So no. um, it, it, what's crazy is Romero. That's I mean. A lot of people are saying that's his last opportunity at, uh, at the title. So. Honestly, he shouldn't have even got that title shot. Israel Adesanya yeah. is the one yeah. that said, hey, I want Yoel because uh, the person he's he was the supposed to fight was Costa. But Costa yeah. got a bicep injury. He had to get um, surgery. So Izzy's like, I don't want to just sit around. Just give me the next toughest dude and get, let me get him. So if it wasn't for that, he, Yoel wouldn't have even, even had the title shot. So And uh, based off of what I've seen from Romero, like, it's not like it was – I mean, he had a chance of winning, like the dude. But I mean, he's what forty two? I didn't even realize he was that old. Yeah, he's old. He's so, that old. So I mean, so I mean, I, I'm not mad at like Romero. Like you, sh- you can't complain about something that you kind of set the pace for. Like you, you kind of wanted it. What you, you could have did a little bit more, but you didn't. So um, I, I hear what you said. The people want to see the fight. Like, yeah, we did. We saw a hell of a fight before y'all two started fighting. So yeah. I ain't really mad. So. I mean, I really wasn't. I, I I see why fans may be like upset about how the main event kind of played out, but I mean, I'm not the most MMA junkie, maybe like you are, but I, I respected what I respected the MMA. I respected the main event enough to be like, okay, like I'm not mad about how it took place. Like I didn't go home super duper upset or anything. I was like, okay, I see what my man's trying to do. Like he's just trying to get enough in to kind of just go home safe and trying to be sound and then he's gonna regroup for his next fight and probably come out and put a better show on but like i mean everything ain't gonna be glitz and glamour like i know my man's got a youtube channel where he's got nothing but a highlight reel just knocking people out but every fight ain't gonna be like that like sometimes you just gotta play it safe and do what you gotta do and get get by like it ain't how you you always fights like this though he always goes he always like chills for a minute and then he looks for openings and then he'll like explode and then he'll slow down because you know he doesn't want to. He doesn't have like the big best get a uh, gas tank. I mean he was never really gassed, but he yeah. never goes all out consistently. Yeah. He'll like go in yeah. bursts, kind of like a hit workout, you know. So yeah. But I was expecting at least in the fifth round. I think everybody was expecting like Yoel to be a little more aggressive. Got to uh, go all out at that. And point. and I think that's what we're looking for because Izzy is such a such a master at his stand up right. craft. So you were, we were like, okay, how is he gonna handle this? And right. it just didn't happen. But yeah, like you said, the co-main was fire, and Joanna, she she's 
hasn't had the best record in the last five fights. I think she's two for Were you three. Okay with that decision? Were you yeah, okay yeah, with yeah. That uh, I think after, so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have been mad either way. So yeah, that's it was what a I was split, thinking. wasn't it? A split. So I think it was split. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I was, so it was okay. It was, either, it was good. Yeah, it was it was good. So either way, like anyone, either one could have won the fight, and I wouldn't have been mad. Like there was no nobody lost that night. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Nobody lost. So um, the ultimate winners were the fans to see yeah. something that spectacle. So yeah, like I'm I'm cool with the way the the main event had. One thing that's handled. good though with the Joanna is. Um, like her, I think she got knocked out twice in her last four or five fights or something. Maybe knocked out, yeah, twice I think. She so, so this is the thing. Like she was like saying back then, she was like using as an excuse was like oh, the weight cut was bad. It, it very well might have been because the weight cut was super easy this time, and she got hit yeah. with some shots. Yeah, and she, she did. Her chin did not fail. Her chin yeah. kept up, held up. Her 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 stamina held up. It was yeah. So it, like I mean, a G, bro. yeah. So. Uh, yeah. A lot of people thought maybe after she lost it, if she lost this fight, that it would have been done for her. But no, I don't think so. I think um, she built a lot of credibility good. back. I think she's good. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing it again. They can run it back. Yeah. Um, I yeah, they can run it back immediately. Actually, they can run that back like now. So yeah, um, I think you want to need I, to heal I, a little I, bit. But yeah, it was a yeah, good. Yeah, 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 it was good and like uh, to to like the card was finish. a lot better than it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, but the card was a lot better yeah. than I yeah. thought. Now, I was just going to say, yeah, like the, the, when you asked if I agreed with it, I, I, I did ultimately agree with it. Strike wise, I couldn't even, like, you know, watching a fight, I'm like, I don't even know who's winning. That's I know I that felt. I know that Yoan is getting busted up more, like, yeah. physically because, uh, yeah. way at least, like, strikes, her strikes are harder. They're more impactful, yeah. but Yoan shoots, uh, hits with more volume. So it's kind of like, right. what are you looking for, right? Depending right, on right. what you're looking for in a fighter, that's yeah. probably what, where you're going to cater towards in terms of scoring. So. But yeah, it was, it was okay. Good... Like I'm cool with split decision. Either one could have yeah. won. I would have. I mean, I, I don't know how I felt about a draw, but I mean, anything really would have been okay. I think at the end of the day. So, um, the two main events they delivered. I, I think I'm not gonna make, like I was okay with the main event. It was okay. Like I'm I'm a casual MMA fan, and for me yeah. to be as probably as casual, you know how I am. Like like for me to even be like nah, like. I'm okay with it. Like, I'm not disappointed. I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm not. I, I get it. Like, and people, I mean, it kind of like a boxing background. Like, I get what he was doing. So, I wasn't was, mad I, at I, it either. Having, I wasn't mad yeah, at it. I wasn't it mad either. at it either. I wasn't, like, I, mean, I wasn't happy about it necessarily, but I wasn't mad at it. I understood it. And then actually, the whole fight, I was I like, I respect it, is what I'm saying. I was on the edge of my seat still, though, watching, like, oh, what's going to yeah. happen? What's going to happen? Yeah. Will I watch yeah. it again? Yeah. No. But nah. was I entertained? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 So, I just had to throw that out there because we didn't really get to talk about anything That's just true. because everything's point, set stop still. So, yeah. So, I was like, oh, light bulb. So, yeah. All right. But, yeah. Other than that, man, we're going to try to run this back next week and we'll see. Uh, we'll see we how WrestleMania is and we'll see where UFC we'll 249 is. Yeah. We'll have a better clear. Yeah. We'll see. All right. Well, y'all take it easy. Be safe. Out. Peace out.